Oh yes, I have officially built a massive new setup for my leaf cutter ants. From tubes to ropes and into this massive art world, this is truly the biggest ant project I've ever made. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ant Holifer YouTube channel. What's going on here? Well, that's something we're going to talk about today because we're talking about my 10 months old Ada Mexicana colony right in front of me. Yeah, I thought, hmm, I would like to give them a big outworld. Why not just use the desk in front of me? And this week, the member line is themed Blood Moon, chosen by Simon, so thank you for the choice. Let's talk about this project in front of me. Now, I could do an entire video on building this setup, and I did. <laughs> Link in the description is a little bit more of a simple vlog of my thoughts doing the process of how I make everything. But yeah, link in the description if you would like to check that out. But let's tour this new setup. So for those who follow my different social medias, you will know it became impossible to feed the colony within that old feeding out world simply because they came through all the barriers and I completely lost the contact with them. That meant that I now needed a bigger outworld and I wanted to go very big. So later in the video we will look at the fungi and how the colony is doing, but let's just focus on the new setup here in the beginning. From tubes to ropes and ropes in tubes, this setup really has it all. And from the old feeding pot turned fungi pot, we start by coming up through some tubes with ropes inside. This rope is mainly because I don't know if the ants can actually walk up and down without the rope, so yeah, better to have the rope in there than to add it later. From there, we go down and into the long straight. From behind the Campanotus nicobarensis colony, it runs all the way behind all of my ant colonies, hitting the corner and continues behind the rest of the colonies. Until we hit this. This is where baby ants turn into strong men. Oh, I mean all worker ants that are out here are actually female, so I guess this is where females turn into women. Oh well never mind, that's not the point. The point is I'm trying to record this and I simply can't because it goes too much up. Trying again, from the corner we hit this very steep hill and flying up through the wall with some rope inside once again. From here we are 2 meters above ground and it's time to finally go down through the rope. And with the rope hitting the outworld, this is where I will now feed the ants. Let's just take that again. Once the worker ants cut a leaf, they have to go up this steep rope, go down the tube, make a 90 degree turn, continue behind all the colonies and take a turn on the way once more. Before hitting this chaos of 390 degrees turns. Yeah. It's definitely not a small upgrade. I think I think it I, I think I can call it quite big. Once again, over there, that's where the colony is. So they have to walk all the way around, all the way up, to come down here to get the leaves. I think we shall just connect everything up. Out with the stopper, in with the cotton. Out with the cotton, in with the tube, through the stopper, and there we go. And straight after connecting it, the ants are flying up through the rope. It doesn't take long at all, these workers are on a mission. This is the moment they've been waiting for, more ground to explore and finally it's not me just removing the lid. Only around one minute in, we start to see the first workers emerging at the top of the tube. And three minutes in, let's check the rope in the outworld. Ah oh, damn man, it's completely full, Ah oh, man, they're just flying into the new setup man. Oh, it's just what I hope to see. And just as I recorded this, I saw that they were also flying down the rope faster than expected and they are just crazy. Maybe too crazy? The following 5 minutes, the first workers hit the first corner, before a few minutes later, they hit the great rope. 
Now I'm gonna just stop right here. Um, I need some name suggestions in the comments because we have a rope over coming into the outworld. We have the long rope coming up here and then we have this rope right here. So over there, rope one, rope two and rope three. Uh, I'm gonna need some name suggestions because it's very complicated to do something talk about this. But 15 minutes in and the first workers are flying up through rope number two. And they're flying all the way up. Nah, okay, uh, turn back again. But one down, three replacements, or, well, oh uh, yeah, well, uh, they're slowly discovering, let's say it like that. And after 20 minutes, they have reached the end of the tube, and for the first time, they stood at a completely open setup. Only one rope to go. But as they were now in unfamiliar territory, and this new wind started kicking up, the workers quickly got spooked and just returned again. But there was no running away, they needed to get down the rope. More and more workers appeared, but still not anyone really wanting to turn down the rope. The top was filling up. Some workers tried going a little bit down the rope, but they didn't get all the way down. Before finally a worker hit the bottom, where I had put a little bramble leaf for a little treat. And from here it didn't take long, the word spread quickly. All the workers starting flooding down and that's where I kicked off my time lapse to see how long it took before they cut the leaves. After 20 minutes they hit rope number 3. After 30 minutes they hit the new outworld. And only after 45 minutes the first leaves can be seen being transported up the rope. Oh this is just incredible man. And still just looking at this today, I mean, seeing all these workers for a job, of course, they're on the wrong side for you, but they're all over here. It's just my dream setup, man. Ever since I started thinking of getting leaf cutters, something like this has been the dream. And now I'm just sitting here looking at it. As the first leaf was quickly disappearing and many more workers quickly responded to the food, I decided to add a little flower and see if they liked it. And although the first ants didn't really like it, they quickly started cutting. And not long after, both green and pink leaves were being transported up the rope. And if you think it looks quite crazy looking at all of these ants, let's try following one worker. She now has her cut piece. She's walking alone. She meets a bit more workers. Workers starting being all over the place. Wait, did she have to go up the stick? Where's the rope? Where's all the way? There's too many workers. Oh my god, what's what? what, what? I don't know how they navigate, but uh, somehow all the leaves are being transported up. Growing and keeping a fungi, cutting leaves, finding the leaves and navigating all the way through this new setup within only half an hour. Truly insane and very inspiring. But come on, some leaves and a little bit of a flower isn't enough for these ants. Let's give them a proper feed. A bit more. More, thank you. Okay, come on, more. Yeah, a bit more. Uh, that should do it. Are you enjoying this video? A like and subscribe would help me very much. Your support lately have been truly insane and we are almost at 5k. By the time this video comes out we may already get past 5k and I just want to say thank you guys. It's incredible and yeah I love all of you and if you aren't subscribed yet now would be the perfect time. Back to the video.
These girls are just incredible. And after only a few hours, they had cut so much leaves that they just had to keep them in the tubes. Although I'm not too sure why they're doing this, I guess it's to maximize the cutting. And while they cut, other ants can get the leaves and feed it to the fungi. But saying that, let's finally look at the fungi. Down the rope and into the old feeding pot. Yeah, I know, it's a big mess. As it became impossible to feed them, it became even worse to clean them. As the colony wanted more fungi growing space, I couldn't do much other than feed and observe them. For some reason they are also housing a lot of that trash in this pot and I'm not too sure why they're doing this as they also have a dedicated trash pot. But from the old feeding pot turned fungi pot, let's go into the pot next door. And it's actually quite a lot of the same story. We have a fungi, we also have some trash, all housed together. And I wanna ask you, can you see why these pots are a little bit weird? Well, they don't have a hydration system. The ants are self-regulating the outworld to make sure all the fungi is doing alright. Although I haven't tested this for too long, the ants sure seem to cope with it. From this dry pot, we follow right into the new Wakushi fungi pot. Filled to the brim and probably also keeping the queen safe. I sadly haven't seen the queen for a few weeks or actually a few months, but I hope she's alright and by the looks of the work count, I'd definitely say it looks okay. This is their main fungi pot, but just like in the last episode, it's filled with fungi and not much have changed. But from here, we go back and hit two more fungi pots. These are the original Wakushi prototype pots and they are still handling the job just as intended. Both prototype pots are also just completely filled with fungi. Lastly, from here we go into the trash pot, and the trash pot is probably the only pot I really can't say much about. I can't really see inside it, and yeah, there's trash inside, I guess that's all I can really say about it. And yeah, that have been a full tour of their entire setup. For a 10 months old colony, they sure have done well and are thriving in this mega setup. To be honest, I don't really look too much at the fungi, and that also means I don't really see too much brood. I think the colony is doing good because, well, there is a lot of workers. Although, major-wise, I know a lot of people are asking if I have the mega super majors. And um, no, I don't think I have them yet. I have some big workers, but that's still the same size majors as from last episode. But if I continue feeding them and the colony continues growing, I'm sure they'll be seen in the future. And saying future, what is my future plan? I mean, this DIY outworld has some big faults and um, if you want to hear why this outworld actually isn't too good, you can see the behind the scenes video. But this outworld is here to stay. But the real question is, what do I do with the fungi pots? Because I want to get this colony to grow very big. They are already at a very big size and I'm feeding them a little bit less. I mean, you can't really say I'm feeding them less. Uh, this is all gone tomorrow, by the way. All of this eaten process gone and they are getting a lot of food and that's also why I have given them the two dry pots because I can challenge them a little bit more as I am very happy with the first three pots and I don't want to push them more than necessary. Saying that I do have some future expansion plans. I would like to just get that whole setup and just rip it all apart and yeah I'd like to get a bit more of a clean setup over in that section because at the moment it's very chaotic with five different pots. But that has been an update on my 10 months old Ada Mexicana leaf cutter colony. I originally got this colony from Ant Antics and they were actually completely reset back when I got them with all of the fungi dying. I suggest if you like this colony to see the full playlist, link in the description. And of course these ants are now living in a new Wakushi pot, some old Wakushi prototype pots and a few DIY projects as well. And I would also like to mention that this whole outworld is heavily inspired by another YouTuber called Hidden Empires. He has a leafcutter colony like mine in a similar setup and he's been a big inspiration behind this new setup. And yeah, with that being said, that has been the end of this video. Can we just get the members up? Of course, we have moved them to the other side because... Why not? So a big thank you to all of the members and a special thank you to the Hulver family members. We have and Antics, Medical Carcase number 9, Casper, Simon, Kai, Anscapes and lastly 
and Snowway. Thank you all and thank you to the rest of the members and thank you for watching it to the end of this video. I want to ask you, what do you think of this setup? Is it a DIY setup you would do or are you just as scared as I am for them to escape all over the place? Let me know in the comments down below and I can just say I'm just so grateful to sit here and look at this trail line. It's, it's incredible to just stare at the ants just walking around all over the place. I'm really considering just doing a stream of, or something of just showing the ants just cutting for two hours because again most of all of this will be gone within two or three hours. They are just, be I mean, they are insane. It's one solid line of just leaves being transported up at the moment, so it's it's purely insane. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Become a member today if you like, and I will see you all in another video. Bye!